Right, so the next part of this question says, by how much is the particles of high mass on speed less than c, the speed of light, giving your answers in meters per second? Right, so let's clean off this stuff. I don't need this anymore. So, recall that in, earlier in the lecture I was talking about the Lorentz transformations and I came up with these factors of gamma and beta. Um, I haven't defined them yet in these notes. I hope you all know that beta equals V upon C, the ratio of the velocity of a particle to the speed of light, and the velocity of a frame to the speed of light, and gamma equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared, which is 1 over the square root of 1 minus beta squared, right? Now, the other thing I taught you was that the total energy of a particle, E, is related to the um, rest mass and gamma by gamma m naught C squared. It's also equal to the, s the square root of the sum of P squared C squared plus m squared C to the fourth. That's the equation you use when you have the momentum and the mass and you want the energy. So that's what we did a minute ago. In this case, what we've got is the total energy and the rest mass, and we want to figure out gamma. So um, because gamma is going to give us the speed. So let's so the, the easy way to get gamma is just to take the ratio of the total energy to the rest energy m naught c squared. Um, and so in this case, the total energy is 1. GeV and m naught c squared is 0 0.131 GeV because m naught 0.131 GeV over c squared. Again, you just move the c squared up and write m naught c squared in energy units. And so both of these things have the same units, so their ratio is dimensionless, which is what you'd expect because gamma is a dimensionless number. And the number actually comes out at 7.63. So that's the value of gamma. Now, um, from that you can get a formula for how much the particle's speed differs from the speed of light by. You could do it exactly by substituting into the formula gamma equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus beta square. So if you put gamma in here and then rearrange, you can get a formula for beta. However, I wouldn't recommend this procedure because when gamma gets quite large, and my usual threshold is larger than 7, V over C is going to be a number bigger than about 0.99. Now, I don't like people calculating velocities of things like 0.9999999C. In this case, it wouldn't be that large because gamma is only slightly bigger than 7. But you'll run into other problems, maybe, where um, gamma is, say, 100 or 1,000. And in those cases, V over C is, is 1, the first approximation. You don't need to calculate 0.9997 more nines. The only time when those nines become important is where you have a race going on between something that's going at exactly the speed of light, say, like a photon, and something else which is going re highly relativistically but not quite as fast, and you want to figure out what the time difference between the arrival times of these things is at some place when they start out at some starting gate at time zero. In those cases, you do need to figure out the discrepancy between the velocity of the particle and the velocity of light. And that, this, this is a prototype of one of those kinds of problems. So in the lecture course, I went through a way of doing this. So let me go through it again. So we've got gamma 7.63. Let's clear all this stuff off the board and just write gamma 7.63 up here. And we're going to write that's, that's greater than 7. And that's, and 7 is my threshold for treating particles as highly relativistic. So I'm going to write this implies that the particle is highly relativistic. Right, now, in this case, the prescription is to use an approximate formula that gamma is approximately equal to the square root of c upon 2 times c minus v. 
So C minus V is the difference between the speed of the light and the speed of the particle V. Um, in a minute I'll prove that this is true, but let's for now just accept that it's true and redefine C minus V to be equal to epsilon. And this is the thing we're trying to calculate. It's the difference between the particle speed V and the speed of light. So we're going to write gamma is approximately the square root of C upon 2 epsilon. Right? Which means that gamma squared equals C upon 2 epsilon. Or epsilon, the thing we're trying to calculate, is C upon 2 to gamma squared, All right? And so you're substituting numbers at this point, um, and you get three times ten to the eight meters per second divided by two times seven point six three squared, and the answer, I believe, comes out at about two point six times ten. To the 6 meters per second. Sounds like a large number, but remember that the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So this particle is moving within 1% of the speed of light in terms of its velocity, so it's going very, very fast. And this is accurate, this approximation is accurate to about 5%. For gamma, is about 7. It gets much more accurate as gamma gets bigger and bigger and goes up to 10 or 50 or 100 or even higher than that. See, I was going to stop it there, but I think I'll just quickly show you why gamma is approximately c upon 2 epsilon before I go on to do part c of the question. So, um, if we write gamma equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared upon c squared, and write that c minus v equals epsilon, which implies that v equals c minus epsilon. I've just rearranged